lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. So I can be reborn. 
driving Logan to Logan while trying to get out the cash back.
making us strong. Well, without further ado, she's a returning guest here at the Logan Power Show. Um, she is a motivator. She's an author. Uh, she fights for righteousness, and she's a blessing to always be around. She's the one that always is Blossom Rogers. How you doing, now? I do apologize. There is there's something that's really going on to our spricker, and uh, we're going to get it together. Trust and believe. I'm trying to get around some of these maneuvers, but we are going to get it done, family. Um, I'm going to find another way to get this done. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me, y'all. Yeah. 
where you're going to have to fast, where you're going to have to believe this thing despite what others see, um, it's, it's real. I promise you within the next couple of months, things are going to totally change where parents really now, you think, um, you think parents right now is going to be homeschooling your kids? You probably got to homeschool the rest of 2020 the way it's looking. That's true. I'm just thankful we don't have to homeschool no kids. <laughs> but I'm good. I, I do understand because me and my wife was talking about that. You know, you have to um, put things in perspective. It's not a vacation. There's, there's, this is a time for learning and showing your kids structure and, and, and planning on, you know, the, the right things to do. So, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, Pastor. Absolutely, absolutely, um, and that's and that's okay, and that's what we want to do. We want you all who are listening to us right now to understand that we, that we have to understand that for us to God be the glory, we have to put Him first. So, without further ado, the guest of the hour who've been working with Miss Blossom Rogers on the line, ma'am, can you hear us? Let me know. Miss Rogers, let me know. Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you. Jesus. She on the line, y'all. She is <laughs> on the line. All right. How's everybody doing? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we let we get the ball. We rocking and rolling. Hey, like I said, we in faith. So Miss Rogers, tell people about who you are what you got going on so we can get into this interview so we you can bless the people. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, I give God all the glory and the honor for allowing me to be here tonight. I got a little head cold going on, but we're not going to let that stop us. Um, no, no. My name is Blossom Rogers. I am uh, one of God's chosen vessels. Uh, I used to be on crack cocaine for 19 years, but God, I got 15 years. Uh, God has blessed me. I am the author of four books from under bridge one from under bridge two. My third book is called and they lab. And my last book, it just came out when they lab, because I want somebody to hear me and hear me. Well, you got to know what uh, laughter you're dealing with. Are they laughing with you or at you? We get them two things confused, you know, so you need to start really paying attention. Are they laughing with you or at you? Um, like I said, it is a blessing and an honor to be here tonight because some of us did some didn't wake up this morning. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, God bless me to tell my life story. You know, um, in book one, it tells about how I went through um, abuse as a child, you know, molestation. We couldn't talk about that kind of stuff. Um, I talk about how I got pregnant at an early age, how I got married at an early age, and how I got with a guy who was already on crack cocaine. Um, thought I could change him, but it changed me. We, As we know, we can't change nobody but ourselves. Uh, book number two talks about how I've been to prison, mental institutions, jail, rehab after rehab, delivered from a homosexual lifestyle because of going through the abuse and being raped. I thought going with a woman was better. And, you know, we don't want to talk about that spirit that's, that's taken over, but we have to we have to call them things as, as, and, and let it know that, you know, God is still in control. That's not of God. That's an abomination. Um, one thing about me, I'm not ashamed of nothing I've been through because it wasn't me that was doing all that stuff. You know, it was the drugs and the alcohol. Um, my habit was five to six hundred dollars a day. Um, I also talk about how I was an unfit mother, but by the grace of God, my mother and my great grandmother stepped in and, and kept the chain together. But now I have a relationship with my sons. Um, you know, we, it's it's always a route to why we drink and get high. You know, we don't wake up just saying I want to be an addict or an alcoholic. It's always a reason, and mine was going through the child abuse. Um, we got to stop saying whatever happens in the house stays in the house. That's, we're just as thick as our secret. So that's why God has allowed me to write my life story, to be transparent, to be able to help somebody. And the book is not to embarrass my family or anybody else. The book is to help somebody because, you know what, everybody's going through something. My bridge might not be your bridge, but everybody got a bridge. 
So we need to come from up under the bridges and just let these people know that, you know what, yeah, I did all these things, but God still loved me. God still loved me no matter what. Um, and my the third book is called And They Laugh, because, you know, I had a lot of people that laughed at me and picked at me and said I wouldn't amount to nothing but, but God. And then, like I said, with my fourth book, uh, uh, that one is dear to my heart. This one's dear to my heart because when I, um, I was coming out of my addiction, I had got into the church, but then I backslid. And, you know, I don't know why people say when I found Jesus, Jesus was never lost. I was. But because he loved me so, he came into that dope hole where I was. I'm originally from Florida. So one night I was in a crack house in, in Daytona Beach, and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I started writing God a letter and just started telling him how how tired I was. Because I had done, you know, got into the church. I've seen how good it was, just to taste how good God was, you know, and I wanted that back again. Um, the young lady's house that I was in that night, I remember saying to her, she came to bring me another hit of crack. And I remember saying to her, when you see me again, I'll be clean and sober. And she laughed, okay, because I knew she was laughing at me. But God wow. God be the glory. I um, took one more hit off the stem. You know, you have a lot of people saying, you ain't throw the dope away. No, you got you got to be real about this stuff. You know, when we come into the church, when we get saved and sanctified, you know, that some of us want to act like we we came out shaking a tamarind. That's not true. You know, it's a minute by minute. You know, we don't always thank holy, but we thank God that we serve a holy God that never sleeps nor slumber. And, and one thing I love about him, because he loves me no matter what. Now, man, I always try to throw your past up. You remember what you used to do to this. But one thing about with God, I've never told him a secret and heard him to, heard that he told anybody my secrets. You know, you got wow. you can go to him in, in the midnight hours. You know what I'm saying? When when the tears are dropping from your your from the bridge of your nose, he's catching them tears so he can water your blessings. Uh, so God bless me. I checked myself into the mental hospital and they sent me to Miami where everything was. But see, I ha- I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you have to be sick and tired. When we know better, we should want to do better. And so um, mm-hmm. I, they sent me to a treatment, but I didn't go back around to people, places, and things. Now, I got a lot of friends that are able to take a drink and put it down, but I'm not one of them. So when you know what you can and can't do, don't try to t- don't try to fit in with everybody. That, that's the problem. We, we try to be like everybody else. Um, at that time, I uh, got... Went back to school, got my diploma, went back, went to college, became a national medical assistant, and I got married for the second time. Moved here to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and I want people to know that even though I'm clean and sober, we're still going to have life issues, okay? Now, my second time trying to do this marriage thing, you know, we got a divorce due to love. And people say love, I said, yes, because he loved talking to other women and brought another woman in my home. You know, I was the kind of person that got high if a bird got hit, you know what I'm saying? But when this went through, when I went through this, I remembered I did not want to go back up under that bridge because I slept in a car. It was a 1993 Dynasty in the back seat of the car. So we had to play the tape all the way through. You know, it, you know, you some people say I didn't have fun out there. Yes, I I had a I had a good time out there. I just feel like the consequences that that came with some of my decisions. So you know, we got the divorce, and then uh, first time buying a home. I lost the foreclosure because I couldn't afford all the bills, but I didn't go back and get high, okay? Second time, mm-hmm. buying a brand new car, lost at the foreclosure, but I didn't go back to getting high. As long as we don't go back to the old ways, and nobody's perfect, we all fall short, but, you know, if and if you do fall, shake yourself off and, and just try to start all over again. But what I'm saying is don't give up. So in the meantime, you know, God has blessed me. The books have came out. Uh, God bless me. Now I'm a, a nonprofit organization, which is called From Underbridge Safe Haven Home for Women, where I went for Habitat three years ago, and I told them my dreams, how I wanted a home for women that wanted to stay clean and sober. Well, they couldn't build the house for me, but what they did, what God did, God touched their heart. They gave me some land. So I have my land, my blueprints, my building permit. I've been approved by God. In the city, we get the house six women instead of three women. So we're in the process now. We're trying to raise the money to get the house built. We we need another 40000 and then we'll be on the way. Um, also, God has blessed me. Um, I went back and got certified as a peer support specialist for mental illness and substance abuse. God just opened the door. I just got a job with the University of Alabama. Their very first peer support specialist started last week. So even though I went through all these things, 
good things are still coming. And so if anybody has anybody that's suffering with the drug addiction, with the mental illness uh, uh, problem, um, homosexual lifestyle, just anything that's not of God, don't give up on them. Because mm. I went through all that, and God still loves me no matter what. He still opens up the door for me. So like I said, that's, that's what Blossom is doing um, now. Amen, amen. Now listen to me. Let's just recap some of the things Ms. Blossom Rogers has done. 19 years she was on crack cocaine. Now they tell you crack is one of the strongest drugs, one of them out there. They say when you when you when you have crack you don't come back. Those are facts. Those are actual facts. People who have been on the strong strong drugs. Those are the ones that the recovery in the natural is not it. A lot of people can say like, man, I've been on that that long and I'm still living. Some people can't even say, I've been on been on something that long and I still got my right mind. Think about it. She's been on that thing 19 years. That's almost two decades. Of yeah. Something strong. Yeah. Strong. Is this stuff is strong? Crack have your teeth messed up. Crack have your hair lost. Crack. Crack had you skinny like like no tomorrow. Crack could have you all messed up inside and out. Crack could have you doing something you never thought you ever do. I've seen I've seen people that's on crack. That's that stuff is nothing to play with. You talk about certain things that you see like man, you know when someone's on that, the the theme for that. I want some more. You can go through any kind of limit. To get that to get that back in your system, and you know you think about drugs. Drugs takes time to come out your system. And she said she's only 19 years, and God has restored her. So, what we need to do as a body of Christ, like she said, you don't give up on that person that you say, "Well, man, they're too far gone." That person that you heard that she say, "Well, hey, they'll, they'll never, they'll never amount to nothing because they've been doing it for so long." You know, God can't use that person. They're they they're, they're dead to me. You always hear those kind of things, those family members or those friends that you left left in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. But God that's like they but God restored this woman of God to get her back on her feet and that's a testimony in itself from under a bridge. So she's done four books. Um they are very powerful. Her testimony, she even shares her mug shot. She even shared how she looked when she was on it. And, and you, you know what you, you can't. Can Go ahead. And you have to, you, and I don't mean to break in, but I, I just want to put this out there. And you got to just. Love the person, but hate the sin. And then you got to remember too that you we have uh, generational curses uh, that's passed on down. You know, in my family, it was the with the molestation of women. You know, but but God has raised me up to break that generational curse. You know, uh, uh, and then like I said, we got to start talking about stuff. Stop being embarrassed. You know, uh, don't don't tell them my business. All that. No, it's about it's about helping somebody. You know, when I was coming up. You know, if you did something, the neighbor whooped you. Then the next neighbor whooped you. Then your mama came and whooped you. Now you do that, you gotta fight. The, you gotta fight the whole family. It's not like when I was coming up. You know, we gotta stop all these um, secrets because we're just as sick as our secrets. Get down to the root of the issue so we'll be able to help somebody. You know, um, if anybody look at my pictures on Facebook, I when I go on program, I wear Chuck tennis shoes because, you know, you got to reach these people where they're at. You know, when you see somebody hungry and got a sign and you walk up to them and say, Jesus love you, they're not going to receive that. If they're saying they're hungry, feed them in the natural, then you can feed them in the spirit realm, you know. You got to reach these people where they're at. Stop stop making it seem like, you know, you haven't done nothing or, 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 or I used to. Break it down and let these people know, you know, we haven't Amen. always been perfect. We haven't Amen. always been perfect. So like I ah. said, it's because what we do to somebody, we got to remember we still have generations that's got to come behind us. You know what I'm saying? So 
Get real with these people. Take them, and you know, my the name of my radio show used to be called "Take the Mask Off." Remove the mask. Take these masks off and let these people see. And then you know what? Yeah. Another thing, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going we're, we're going to be accountable. You know, when these people come inside the churches, that you know, some people want to catch them, then then clean them. You, you, I mean, clean them and then catch them. No, you got to love them regardless. Stop talking about right. the girl that got the short, the short skirt on. You know, because the long skirts can come up just like the short skirt. So stop beating these people up. You know, we're going to be accountable because God's house is for people that are going through something. You know, stop, I, cause I, and the reason I'm speaking on that is because I went through that. Amen. 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 That's Woo! that's what we got to do. And, and people that's on Facebook Live who's watching me right now, and ones that are listening right now on the call, I want you to understand this, that you got to catch people in their dark state. If you're catching them when the light is on and that's, you ain't, you're not doing anything, you got to get them when it's dark. Because, see, right now we're in a state of emergency. I'm letting you know right now, the body of Christ, we are in a state of emergency. You better start praying. You better start fasting. You better start putting it together. You better start working together. We cannot sit around here and you're going to allow the the world to dictate how this is going to go. People looking for pastors, looking for real people. It's it's going to be time you be, you're going to start doing house ministry. 2020 is going to be a house ministry situation. 2020 is going to be a ministry where you're going to have to mention somebody in the grocery store now. You're going to have to get out on the street and literally say, to to God I live and to God I will die believing this thing. You will have to go to jail saying, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You literally going to have to believe this thing. You have to walk this thing with your hands open, with your heart open, your heart clean, telling people Jesus is the way. Because you're giving them this the feel good message without the truth and the fact well, that goes behind it, you're going to lose them. I promise right. you're going to lose them. Because right now, America. You and we are in trouble. I'm, I'm not. I'm, the world's in trouble, but America's definitely in trouble. Oh, all yeah. that, all that big talk that we're talking, them days are over with. Entertainment that you say like, man, I gotta watch this. That's gonna cease for a while. We we'll watch a lot of reruns for these next couple of months because right now, people are looking for answers. In the desert place, in Death Valley, yeah. is Death Valley. Satan is 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 walking around seeking who he can devour. Mm. People are walking in fear. I tell you this right now, that people are not really understanding. People like Blossom Rogers said I was on crack for 19 years, and I tell you this right now, crack been an epidemic for almost 20 plus years, 30 years. And ain't nobody said we doing. Uh, you can't touch nobody for within a certain distance. Crack, crack is just as bad as coronavirus. Crack is just as bad as coronavirus because you know what happens is you ain't got no cure. Once you take crack, what you gonna do? You ain't. A lot of times you can't go back. The body immune system it, it tears it down. So Ms. Rogers is telling you all that we have to, as a body of Christ, you can't go in there in your in your in your in your in your, in your nice good suit to get these people saved. You may go in some jeans and, and some shoes, get your good shirt on, and say like, "Hey, let's get dirty." You don't have to touch somebody who you never touched before. They may not look clean, but I tell you this right now: that's why get a pray, fast, and have an open heart to tell God. That, hey, Father, you want to help me. Because like I tell you right now, if you want to get people saved in 2020, this is the year that we get them saved, we get them connected. I promise you this, 
We're going to change the globe. We can get more people saved in 2020 than we had in the past five years because people are looking for answers right, right. now. Right. People are not sitting here and waiting until this all cleared up and now we come to church. No. You better come to church now. Get it right now. I promise you, y'all, we're looking for answers. And I'm telling you, all these social media chats, we can Facebook Live, Instagram, Twitter, we can do all these things live for these situations. But we ain't touching people like we used to. You may have to do a yeah. door-to-door ministry. People, wow. you, you laugh about door-to-door ministry, but that's what's going to have to be to if you want to get these people saved, delivered, and set free. So Amen. I want you all who are listening to us take heed to what's been saying. Now, Ms. Rogers, how can people get in contact with you? How can they purchase your books? Okay, you can. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, you can reach me on Facebook, Blossom Rogers. You can give me a phone call at 305-753-8164. Uh, send me an email at blos, the number two, white, at yahoo.com. Check out my new website, blossomrogers.weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y.com. And you can go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon. Um, and like I said, if you ever need a speaker, and I love to laugh and have a good time. Uh, because laughter is good for you. So, you know, I always tell people before God uses me, I say two things I like to do. I like to pray and let you know, okay, if, the, if you can laugh. Because you know what? I know you'll be laughing with me, okay? Um, and if some laughing at me, it's still all well. I'm still going to do what God tells me to do, you know? Because, we, you know, right. one thing I want, I, I want to put out there, when God tells you to do something, do it. Don't worry about what them people are going to say because when you stand before him, you're going to be accountable. You know, when the, when God told me to do the book, now I was scared. Oh, I'm scared. I said, oh, Lord, I'm telling the family secret. And, and I'm not going to say that things didn't happen but God. But when I stand before before him, I can say I did what he told me to do. And Man. that's to try to Man. help somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody's Man. got a child. Somebody's got a husband, somebody's got a wife, somebody got a family member that's on crack cocaine that has been uh, through the stuff I've been through. I've been to prison. My prison number is 589931. So, you know, somebody's been through something ah. I've been through. You understand me? So, like I said, mm-hmm. don't don't be ashamed. And when you find yourself ashamed about the situation, it's something that is down, deep down inside with you. You understand me? So I, I don't be ashamed. I'll tell my story wherever I go because, like I said, each time God allows me to get on a platform, it's more healing for me. Like, you know, when I tell everybody I'm still a hustler now, but I hustle for God. So when I was out there in the streets, I used to knock on them dope boy doors, ask them, can I do this and do that to get a hit of crack? So that's what I do when it comes to people's radio shows and TV shows. God bless me. I was on the uh, Pastor Cliff Dollar show, and it was a blessing because God allowed me to be on the TV show with a millionaire. Back in the days, I would try to cut his pocket. Do you understand me? But God allowed me to be myself, and Pastor Dollar allowed me to be myself. Then God allowed me to do five projects with TBN. You know, so don't tell me what God can't do. Y'all, when I, when I was up under that bridge, I used to hear the cars going across the bridge. Them people was up there living, and I was up under there dying because I was worried about what people were saying about me. But long as mm-hmm. I know and my abuser know and God knows that these things happen, that's all that matters to me. You understand me? And then he had to teach me how to forgive my abuser. Y'all, I want y'all to hear this too. The forgiveness is not for them. It's for you because mm-hmm. something had to have happened in order for him to inflict that on me. You know, hurt people hurt people. Then God right. had to teach me how to forgive myself. So like I say, y'all, the, to, today, I want, if you'll never hear nothing else I, I say, remember, are they laughing with you or at you? And be transparent. That's what God, mm. God wants some real people. You understand me? He wants some real people that's not ashamed for nobody to try to throw your past up 
in your face. Okay, so all is well. That's the only way they're gonna try to get you physically. Yes. If they can break you mentally, they ain't gotta worry about breaking you clean. You understand me? So like I said, my name is Blossom Rogers, and it has truly been a blessing and an honor to be on this platform. And Miss Calvin, may God show you favor for being obedient for saying yes. For me to come back on your show, Amen. I, it's a blessing for me to have you on because you, you, uh, Miss Rogers, you build my faith. A lot of times, what what we do is we always try to make to ourselves to be greater, but you got to be humble. Because I tell people right. like this: when you say like, "Well, man, you know, how old are you?" I said, "Miss Rogers got me beat on that one," but I say, "What's your testimony?" Well, I said Ms. Rogers got her testimony is way greater than way greater than mine because there's someone out here can identify what it's like to be in the gutter. And what I mean by right. the gutter is is that gutters could be it's twofold. Either could be you either can either force yourself to be put in the gutter as a choice factor, or circumstances put you in the gutter. See when you take certain drugs that will literally put you in the gutter. You will become, and you will literally, your whole mindset will change. You want to see death real quick? Take some of those particular drugs. You put them to your system. You will see hell real quick because your hey, body man. is going to be right, like no tomorrow. And your spirit, man, is going to be so affected and yelling and screaming and saying, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. So, and the the funny thing is that when you say people was laughing at you, see, that's what the Bible says, the last will go first and the first will go last. That's a, that Amen. is a very powerful statement because the thing about it is some of the people you think, oh, man, they, they are shooing for heaven. Oh, that's, I know that one was totally saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. When it came down to it, that person wasn't even two cents saved and was playing church. But the person you dogged out, eating crumbs, the person that was literally going through those that turmoil, that's the one that made it heaven. That's why Lazarus' story is so powerful. Hey, Amen. Person that was eating crumbs, that's who Jesus said I brought into my bosom. The rich young ruler, the one who just threw him to the side, burning in hell, burning. But we always talk about, man, for God be for me. You know, that's why I said, be careful how you treat people. Be careful what you say. Because I promise you this, the ones you laughing at could be the ones that could bring you out of your dark place. I hope that helps somebody here on the line. I hope that helps someone here on Facebook. I pray that right now that everyone who's listening to me at this point in time, that you understand that this detriment, this this virus, this fear that's plaguing not just the United States, not just the world, is a wake-up call that we as believers have got to make the decision to do God's work. And I promise you right now, for those who listen to Blossom Rogers, you need to purchase her book today. Put it in your Rolodex. Get that book. Bring her into your radio show, your TV show. Bring it to your church. Because I tell you right now, real people will get real results. Fake people will just keep you going for a season. But real people will bring you through. Hey, family. Hey, man. That's the time I saw, time I got. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Next week, Thursday, we'll be ready, fired up on March 26th. My name is Calvin Logue, the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. We love y'all. We appreciate Ms. Blossom Rogers. Please the Green family listening in. We love everybody. Ms. Kimmy Kim, take us out. And to God be the glory. Thank you for listening in. We'll see you soon.